What is up, everybody? Thank you so much for being here. I am so freaking excited about this interview. Um, <laughs> I got a DM, guys, and, and this is what the DM said. Let me know if you need a Tallahassee criminal defense lawyer to cover Donald Adelson. Would love to run my mouth about the case. And I'm like, oh, interesting. Uh, then I checked out Katie's profile. She has a South Park uh, banner, and uh, I looked up her information. I'm like, oh, hell yeah. Yes, please. Um, so before I bring Katie on, let me give you a little background. By the way, speaking of, I think uh, Katie will like my new, this is my newest soundbite for when we cover the Adelsons. Hope you guys like this. Here we go. Boom, Andy. Live. <laughs> so, so we're going to have that for any future uh Adelson cases. So uh, Kathleen Katie Bogenschutz, I hope I got that right. I asked her before, but who knows, was born and raised in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Uh, she went to college at Nova Southeastern Law in University. In her third year, she was a certified legal intern at the Broward State Attorney's Office, trying six jury trials before she graduated law school. Uh, she worked at Broward State Attorney's Office for over nine years. Uh, she handled and tried a litany of criminal charges. Uh, after four years prosecuting general crimes, uh, DUIs through and including attempted murder, she was promoted to the Specialized Sex Crimes and Child Abuse Unit, where she stayed for over four years. Uh, then she moved to Tallahassee. She was barred in both the middle and north districts of Florida and joined the state attorney's office for the second judicial circuit. Uh, in three years she spent there, she was designated designated to prosecute approximately one quarter of the sex crimes that occurred in Leon County, uh, which is the home of both uh, FSU and Florida A&M University. She also handled numerous homicides uh, and attempted homicides during her tenure. She also worked for three years in Georgia Kappelman's office, including the first trial, which she watched gavel to gavel, uh, and she watched the subsequent two in private criminal practice in Tallahassee. To date, she has handled thousands of cases in multiple jurisdictions and tried over 130 jur jury trials to verdict. Uh, she is proficient in motion practice and has handled and won at least four complicated stand your ground motions. Uh, in April 2021, she was recruited to join Jansen and Davis after spending her first 12 uh, years of her career as a prosecutor. Uh, she lives in Tallahassee with her husband, two dogs, and two cats. So without Further ado, here is Katie. How are you, Katie? Good. I think we're afternoon now. Good afternoon. Oh, good afternoon. You're correct. Um, thank you so much for reaching out to me and, uh, you know, to talk about this case. When did you first, I'm curious, when did you first hear about this case? So I, I do remember it coming up on CNN when, when he was murdered at his home in Benton Hills, which is probably one of the nicer or nicest neighborhoods here in Tallahassee, um, which I know now I'd never really been to Tallahassee except to visit the Capitol once uh, when when he was killed. But in 2014, I did have some friends at the state attorney's office who had had him as a law professor. And uh, so they were all talking about it and that got on my radar. And then I was at the state attorney's office in Broward um, when uh, some of the arrests were made. So that kind of got on my radar. I believe the re the arrests were made in Dade County, though, but it did still kind of trigger uh, something in my brain. And you know, uh, my husband moved. My husband was a prosecutor too with me in Broward as well, which is where Charlie lived and uh, where he was held prior to being extradited here. Well, not extradited because it's different counties, but um, removed to Leon. So, can you tell us about the time you? You worked in Georgia Kappelman's office. What, what, what was that like? Um, so it's a significantly smaller office than the one in South Florida. Um, this is the South. Everybody knows each other. Everybody's very friendly. Um, Georgia had always been working on this case, but it was kind of in the background. And then suddenly it was tried and we it was being streamed, which I'm sure everybody knows. You can go back and watch the two trials and some, some people refer to them as Katie one and Katie two, because Katie ha was retried right. after that uh, mistrial on the first one. Um, and it started becoming fascinating because you think about, and until I moved here, it did not become apparent to me how they had miscalculated 
in this case because it was almost perfect. Well, we talked about this before. Tell the folks, yeah. your, tell the folks your theory on wh- how they miscalculated and, and why this did. It could it could have been perfect, right? Why was it that it wasn't perfect? Why did they get not get away with it? So uh, I the first time that I came to Tallahassee and actually spent significant time here is when we got hit by Hurricane Irma in South Florida, and it was. Uh, really nasty. I was out of work for three weeks and I basically moved in with my then boyfriend, now husband for that period of time um, and was living here. And I met all of his neighbors and oh, it I, I basically turned to him and said, did you buy a house in effing Mayberry? Well, which might be kind of a deep cut for, for some people, but um, no, the, like his neighbors are all up in each other's business. It's the South. Casseroles appear on doorsteps when you have a baby. Um, You know, somebody gets sick, everybody's outside. One of my neighbors was pulled away in an ambulance. The entire neighborhood saw him off in the ambulance. And, you know, coming from where I come from, which is a larger, uh, born and raised in Fort Lauderdale, Miami area. And you and I talked about this before, like, I don't wanna talk to my neighbors go away. I like, yeah. I, I'm not required to talk to you. And right. uh, anybody in the Northeast will understand that as well. And people here come out and genuinely inquire about the weather. And they all know my dog's name, which I would, you know, probably call the cops about if I was still living in Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> <laughs> right. So by the way, I, I said, you know, he, I've said this before on the stream, I ninja crawl, I, I put on fatigues, camouflage to take out my garbage so my neighbors don't see me but that's not right. the case right so why does that lead to them getting caught what what do you think everybody's watching everything people are looking out for each other i got a text message when i was on vacation because there was a painter's van in front of my house like just checking in on you and yeah we were having our house painted so right. that was fine but like and this is 2014 is when the homicide occurred so this is like prior to really cameras really being uh, ubiquitous around us. Um, And James Geiger, bless his heart, um, was in his front living room. He hears a loud noise. Now, if you're in New York and I'm in Miami and I hear a loud noise, that might be a gunshot. What are you doing? Not getting involved, right? Right. You know, I'm not going out there. No. And Geiger looks out his window, makes a note of the car leaving the driveway, silver pine mica uh prius he's able to identify it and then he goes and walks into his neighbor's open garage to check on him and calls him by his first name and i was just like they did not expect this and right. i could have told him that i mean not that i would have helped him but right right this is that is the kind of town you're dealing with and uh, even my mother, who is a Long Islander, born and raised, and then moved down to Fort Lauderdale and now lives on the barrier island down there in a, in a house that basically cannot be insured by anyone, um, except for our state-run insurance. Uh, and uh, But even she came up here when I, had, uh, when I recently had a baby, and she was like, everyone is nice. Like, it, it, was, it was like Twilight Zone scenario for her she goes people care about each other I'm like yeah is it a <laughs> i i mean i i was in a garage parking lot in an elevator when i first moved here and somebody started asking me about the weather and i was like damn it you know i moved from miami to, to Tall- fucking tallahassee and i'm getting robbed now now i get robbed <laughs> and no no he was talking about the weather have so- a great day lovely to meet you when we got out of the elevator and I was just like what just happened so they severely miscalculated the rubes the dumb people but hey they're friendly you know, by the way they're you know for them to call other people dumb is hilarious but yeah they, maybe they should have thought of that that they you know have a hit man go in broad daylight out to a garage in in a place where everyone is keeping an eye on everyone and wants to see that maybe wasn't the best idea for those idiots yeah. So they, you know, you go back through the surveillance and you find the silver pine mica Prius. Um, and yeah, that's it. Thank you, James Geiger. That was your first, your first break is that he was able to identify, well, look, looks kind of like a Prius. And even if he's not a car guy, 
thanks. It's something. Right. And what an absolute gentleman he was to see. I've seen him in all three trials just, and you could tell he's pain trying at the operator. Like this is serious and they're not really listening to him, but his testimony mm-hmm. was just amazing. And just an all around great dude, you know? And I'll also tell you this because, uh, like I said, had a baby on maternity leave. There's a lot of napping that happens when you've got one of those in your house for, for them, not you. Um, and uh, I listened to a lot of other interviews in this case. And so remember, Danny was on the phone when when he was shot. He wasn't on the phone with Geiger. Who was he on the phone with? And it really hasn't been super, it, it really hasn't been a point in these cases, but I think it really illustrates what kind of town this is and why, frankly, you know, Fort Lauderdale's home for me. We moved back there, I wouldn't be upset, but uh, I love this town. Um, He's on the phone with a uh, with an elementary school that he and Wendy are fighting about sending their kids to. And he's questioning this person that works at the elementary school. And I can't remember his name, but I'll link it to, I think Mentor Lawyer has it up, who's done a really great job on this. Oh, and the guy from, the guy uh, knows he's talking to Danny Markell because he knows the name of the kid. Um, and he says, I heard a shot and I heard a grunt and then I heard some heavy breathing, like like somebody was not okay, like labored breathing. And so what does this guy do? Well, first of all, what would you and I do? Nothing. Like, he'll call me back. Right. Um, what does this guy do? He looks up Danny Markell on the property appraiser's website, figures out where his house is, dials 911, and calls it in. Now, Geiger's already over there, so that's why this is not you know a major part of the case. But he calls in and gives a statement to the police, which is up on, I think, it, I think it's Mentor Lawyers uh, website. And that is what kind of a town this is. That is like, are you really? I just I heard a noise. Like, I don't know. Maybe he dropped his phone. I, I got other things to do. Right. No, that's that's what people do here. They looked up Markel. They figured out the address. He called 911. Something's wrong. Um, I want a well check. Oh, yeah. Somebody else. And I think by the end of the call, they said there was some kind of an accident over there. And thanks so much for your call because Geiger had already called too. Right. But that's that's what they're dealing with here, that people right. look out for each other. Right, uh, it's so and interesting. It's like, coming from where I come from. Right, yeah, same here, same here on Long Island. I, I am avoiding my neighbors like the plague. So yeah, that's, a, that's right. definitely a culture shock for, would be for me too. Um, so I'm curious, you know, you worked in George's office. When you have a case like this as a prosecutor, just from your experience, how could she like, handle other cases to me like this is so like detailed and there's so much going on i mean i mean is she work i obviously prior to trial she is but like right now for donna's case is she like i mean uh, but now she's done it like three times so i guess it's a little bit easier for her but still nonetheless so let's just say for the first trial how much work goes into that when you're when you're handling handling a case like this that's so involved so i i can tell you i had no involvement i know you put down insider's view Um, Yes, I was inside of that office. I have no info that has not been put out by that office. And uh, if I did, I would keep my mouth shut about it because I do not want to harm any further investigation because it may not be over. Right. So, um, but yeah, it's right now, I think she knows this case the way she knows her kids' birthdays. You know, I think she knows this case the way she knows the way that like, you know, your car can drive you home at the end of the day and you can get there and say, gosh, I don't really remember that, but I'm here safely, aren't I? Um, That's that's the way I think she knows this case. This case has been her life since it happened, and it has been a significant amount of work for her. Um, And keep in mind, there were arrest reports that were released back in 2016 um about charlie um which which of course led to him becoming incredibly paranoid which is kind of fun to listen to on the calls uh but it like she wanted to or there was this thought to go arrest charlie back in 16 so this is something that has been i'm assuming she hasn't told me this but i'm assuming this is something that has been eating at her since then that like he's the one that got away right now let me ask you this the fact that it took a long, t- so long to go after them, I know, you know, they, I think Dolce Vita, the, that tape was when they finally were like, we're, we're going ahead with this, but when they got the audio right and they were like ready to go. But do you think there was any politics involved as, uh, you know, as someone who's from down there, 
on why it took so long to kind of get the Adelsons, or they just needed the evidence. They needed more evidence. They didn't have enough. I I don't know. Uh, uh, I, I'm less of a conspiracy theorist than other people that live in my house. Let's put it that way. Um, so I I think you know what I I'm, I don't want to speculate, but I I will tell you all's well that ends well. And um, I I do think that the jury got it right with Charlie. And had they gone forward back then, who knows? Right. So yeah, it's 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 you know justice delayed is not necessarily justice denied in this scenario. I don't know if we would be here if they had done the swoop down and done all the arrests back then. Okay. So that's that's the way that I I prefer to look at it. Not the fact that maybe people who have plotted this horrific homicide have had you know eight to ten years out that they shouldn't have had. Right. So let me ask you this. I also, of course, think that they got it right with Charlie, with, with the with the guilty verdict. And probably they say it was like a little more than three hours, but lunch was in there. So I think they, <laughs> I think they were done pretty quick. How like how, how do you think it's going to go for for Grandma Gotti, Donna Adelson? How do you think it's going to go? She hires the same attorney. She's like, oh, that was a good. He did a good job. Less than three hours verdict. Let me hire him. First of all, do you think you know, we kind of discussed this before, but do you think this is a way for her to keep in contact with Charlie by having the same lawyer? And second of all, how do you think a trial is going to go for Donna Adelson? Um, it could be a way for her to keep in contact. Um, I, I doubt the lawyer is sending messages back and forth between the two of them because they're not supposed to have contact. Or if, if there is any kind of messaging, it's something that's case related and not, you know, not something that would get him in trouble with the, the, uh, the overseers down here, the Florida bar. But, um, you know, I... I, I and what I told you previously uh, is that my background is mostly in, in sex crimes, crimes against children. I've had child homicides that have been related to that. Um, and I've lost some cases. Um, Dan Rashbaum used to be a federal prosecutor. They get to pick what cases they take. I didn't get to do that at the state level. So, I mean, I lost a couple of sex crimes cases, cases I deeply believed in and ended up, you know, crying in my car, um, you know, with the windows up like a grown up afterward. But, um, and I, I can think now of two victims on cases that I lost who keep in contact with me to this day. Uh, one of whom remembers my birthday every year, um, it, which is insane to me. I'm like, I barely remember my own birthday at this point. So I, you know, if it's somebody you've developed a rapport with, who you think put everything on the line for you, who you think did a bang up job, who believed you and you've developed this, I, I don't know. I'm just saying that I, I think that maybe even one of my victims where I had lost their case and they knew I was beside myself over it, that if they were able to pick that they might've gone back to me if they were ever the victim of something else. So I guess they're going to go with this double extortion plot again, uh, the, the, the uh, sequel. And I, I, would you, I, I assume they're going to take it. This, this is old grandma. You know, there's no way. Like, how do you think they're going to they're going to play this? I mean, they have to obviously play it different than Charlie. But like, do you, do you think Donna would, would testify in her trial? I mean, Charlie did. You think Donna would just what's your I opinion? think she has to because she has to explain away some of these statements. Um, Yes, I mean some of the. Uh, I think it involves both of us. You probably know. Where, you probably know what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah what do you mean by that, where, Donna? Where you're being very cryptic in your conversations, and I'll, you know, I'll tell you, my mom is the exact same age as Donna. There is no cryptic with her. You would need to spell it out, and and she'll say anything over the phone. So, I, I don't know. I I just. I, I have to, I feel like you need to be able to explain that. You need to be able to say, uh, why did you call Charlie immediately? Uh, when somebody came up and tried to extort you, why not call your husband? Why not call the, call the police? Yeah. Just, I think about my mom. She's about her age. And I'm like, if this guy, which by the way, I've talked about this before. Although I think he's been, he was told to kind of lay off, be nice, be yeah. nice to her. But like, if they didn't want her to I, drop dead in the middle of it. Right. Exactly. So he was like a used car salesman, Latin King. Uh, but uh, <laughs> like, I just think of my mom and my, I, my mom, if she had nothing to do, well, obviously she would, have nothing, but she would be like calling the police. This guy came up to me and it's about my ex son-in-law who got murdered. Like she just keeps walking, puts it in her little purse and then calls Charlie. And like you said, doesn't call Harvey, doesn't call the police. How is she going to explain that away? 
Well, she's going to have to. Um, and, and the other thing is, it, having lived down there, there's also this concept known as condo commandos. And she, of course, was living in a condo at the time. They love to call the cops. Oh, interesting. They love it. Yeah. Whenever you see a battery on a person over 65 down there, you're like, not a condo, not a condo. Because it usually is, there's some kind of like, you know, deep seated uh, anyway. But it's it, people people that are, you know, privileged feel like you get to call the cops and have them be your personal police force. And, you know, you get to swear out affidavits and go to court. And people that are retired love going to court. Um, so, I mean, that's some of the stuff that you deal with as a prosecutor down there. Right. But it's I, I just don't see her not calling the cops and calling her son first. And, and that's, she's going to have to explain that. She's going to have to explain the, well, I think it involves both of us. Why would Phone calls both? and yeah. the, this EV is going to cost 5K. Yeah. I started like going back and saying, uh, like Googling cost of television in 2016, like trying to figure out like how, it, you know, what kind of massive television this would be. And, uh, you know, she's going to have to explain how after her son gets convicted, she's booking a one way ticket to to Vietnam. I mean, and she, God knows what they are going to find on these electronics. And let me ask you this. Do you think I mean, there's so much we, there's so many ways we can go with this. Do you think they could, they're going to find something on their electronics that might bring in Wendy? Because I know Wendy was real good on her a lot electronics, but you, they, she didn't even know she was on a recorded call when she's calling prison to Charlie about fleeing the country. Technology is hard. <laughs> um, and uh, she's, she's uh, what, she's 73 years old. She was born in 1950. When she was born, TVs were black and white and you had party lines on phones, which will probably go over the head of some of your, Google it guys, um, of your, your listeners. Um, so she's had to learn a lot during her lifetime with technology and, I, I have to imagine she's on an iPhone. Yeah, that's when what they, she's they, on they the got. Phone with Charlie, uh, because otherwise you would physically either hang up the phone or put the thing back in the cradle. Oh, if right, it was exactly, a, right, right, right. Uh, so it says on the screen that the call's still going, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. That's my. I, I and I wonder if she had uh, used maybe a landline, just because some of the calls you hear Harvey on the other line mm -hmm. for some mm -hmm. of them, but you should know like i mean you put the phone up afterward i mean or how... the still you know there's a there's a light still on or something like that so if you're the prosecutor in this case how hard are you going to nail down consciousness of guilt for, just for the, i mean how how bad is that for a jury when you're 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 the co-conspirator in this case gets convicted and now you are immediately trying to leave the country i mean how could a jury not think Hmm, why is she doing this? I mean, what's the argument going to be? I saw that Charlie was not going to get a fair shake, so I knew I wasn't going to get a fair shake. So I had a, like, what could, well, how could they spin this? It's those damn rednecks up in Tallahassee. Those, those rubes. Yeah. yeah. And and the other thing that I wanted to make clear for your, uh, and I, I'm, I love Florida. I make fun of it all the time. I can probably never run for office because of the jokes I've told about Florida. I love Florida, man. Um, but Tallahassee is the most educated city in, in the state. We've got the state government here. We've got two major universities and a lot of kids stay after college. There's a lot of people with advanced degrees that are working in the government at uh, Department of Financial Services, um, Fish and Wildlife, those, those kinds of things, and, and tons of lawyers uh, that are government attorneys up here. Um, th this is the highest education level for the entire state in this city. Um, which, you know, would, here's where I go into Florida. If you're talking about Florida, it's kind of like bragging about acing special ed. But, you know, it's uh, our, I, I'm aware that our state is crazy. But it's but, like, it's way better than Miami. Well, I mean, and, and by the way, for folks who might not know what we're talking about, that's what Charlie and, and Donna are talking about on, on the jailhouse calls is that they, they, they were found guilty because these a bunch of idiots on the jury and this was the Tallahassee Super Bowl, and these these rubes couldn't figure it out. So we're not like it wasn't a jury of my peers, right? That was the part that I I, I actually took personal offense to. Um, it wasn't a jury of my peers, you know. And then he mentions uh, the race of one of the jurors, and uh, that the only one that was really his peer, the the white guy that had a professional job, 
uh, was the only one that was on his side. I mean, uh, uh, yuck. Yeah, I mean, he's just the worst. They're all the worst, other than Rob, who got out of there. So l- l- let's let's move on to to, to Wendy. Uh, what do you think? First of all, in your opinion, do you think she was involved? Uh, yes, but what I think and what I personally, what my personal thoughts on the matter are not relevant. So what I think uh, and what I I, you know, what I think and what I can prove are two different things. And you, I, I understand why they have not gone forward on her yet. So you don't think they have enough that they have right now? Um, or they're just waiting until they get Donna and then they'll charge her because they really need Wendy for motive. They need her to testify for motive. So, and what do you think about the immunity? That that was a must, the use and derivative immunity. Like they had to offer that in order to go forward. You don't, you don't, do you think they could not have done this case without that? Um, I think that the cleanest way to do it was to have Wendy testify to the divorce stuff. I mean, in theory, you could probably call a bunch of other people at the clerk's office to enter. I mean, it's a it's a matter of public record. It'd be a public record under seal. You could have a clerk's office employee testify to it and make the jury read all the pleadings. But, you know, it it, it, it is the cleanest, best for TV way to explain it to a jury. And a lot of times you don't want them caught up in the weeds. Right. Um, and the, actually, sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, no, just of like reading a divorce pleading, even though this one was really interesting because there was shots across the bow every week, it seems like. Right. And I mean, I, I've made a few videos on this. Like he and, and you know, she says she on the trial, she doesn't know what contempt is or, or what the penalties for contempt are. I mean, ugh. but then she could say that that Ruth's uh, law or, or legislation is unconstitutional. But I mean, so um <laughs> Uh, we have a question. I have a question from Helen from our Patreon. She said, well, I mean, I could kind of, do you have a sense of when uh, George is going to take Wendy down? Um, so if I th- knew, I wouldn't tell you. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this. Do you Due think to other people trying to get on flights ahead of their own? Right. Well, like, do you, there's obviously she has more than what has come up in these trials, right? She wouldn't, she doesn't need to, there's no re- reason, reason for her to bring up stuff that would be, to take down Wendy in these trials. She's got to say, she's got some stuff saved, right? She's got it for Wendy. Would you say? Uh, yes. And, uh, some there, there's, uh, some Easter eggs and some of the other, uh, people who were uh, interviewed in this case, uh, by the police that somebody like mentor lawyers put up. Like I said, I watched all was on maternity leave. Um, and uh, this is how, you know, I can never not have a job. I was like listening to trials and interviews and stuff like that on this case the whole time I was on maternity. Um, and there's a, a friend of theirs named Tamara Demko, who's incredibly accomplished. I think she has a PhD, a JD, and uh, uh, she's public health uh, type person, but she's interviewed the day that Dan dies and gives you a lot of information about the uh, workings of the family. And I, I think that she had known the parents too. And she said Harvey wouldn't meet her eyes. In, mm. uh, and did she like she's she's a very perceptive. And she she was talking about like body language and stuff like that, and how this doesn't feel right. And I hope I'm wrong about this. Um, I, I really enjoyed her interviews, and I also would encourage uh, people to watch all of Jeff Lacasse's interviews because and and his evolution throughout those interviews. The first one, it's, I'm still in love with Wendy, but I really don't like this. And the second one, he starts, I really don't like this. I hope I'm wrong. And then by the third one, he kind of lays it all out on the table. Here's my notes that I've taken for a long time. Let's get right. into this. Oh, you watched it then. Oh, I've watched. We, we, we watched yeah, yeah, you, all his yeah, interviews together. He's we, like, I've gone through my text messages, my emails, and I've, I've been very clear not to develop a hindsight bias. And I was just like, oh, it was wonderful. He's he's amazing, absolutely amazing. You know, I get a lot. I get some comments as I played his testimonies and and watched him during trial. People are like, oh, he's the jilted ex lover. Personally, I didn't take it that way at all. But I guess maybe people who have a, I, I think he's amazing. I think he figured out the case within like forty eight hours, and then he comes back in March of the next year and he really figured it out. Right. Uh, he was like, I was hoping you guys would arrest somebody and prove me wrong. Right. But also, I think what's interesting about Jeff is his evolution during the trials. This latest trial, he was like, 
not he was not messing around to me compared to his first two trials and and rightfully so this guy this man has been dragged into this for now almost 10 years uh, having to go to three trials and possibly three more i mean he just i, I mean i love jeff cos i think he's amazing if you ever watch this i hope he i hope he knows people support him and don't think he's i, I think it's ridiculous the assertion that he's uh jilted etc i i didn't get that impression but um yeah i mean between jeff and tato the, to me, like their two stories, they're probably the two most credible sources. And, and when, when, you, when you hear both of them, it's like, and the whole time I'm watching, I was watching Charlie's trial. I'm like, how is the jury not thinking Donna's involved in this? And then, of course, she gets arrested. Do you think yeah. they would have waited much longer? Because they, they, obviously at that point, they're surveilling her and they're like, we got to go get her. But like, how much longer do you think they would have waited if, if she didn't try to flee? Do you have any sense of that? Um, so in Florida, for a first degree murder, premeditated murder, and I realize you're coming from New York, so, um, but premeditated murder, you must indict it with a grand jury. Um, that is the rule. Um, and it doesn't matter if you're going for death or you're not going for death. You must indict it with a grand jury. Oftentimes, you'll see people get arrested for second degree murder, and uh, then the we'll run in and try to indict them real quick. Um, in this case, because she was out, because it was 10 years, I'm, I'm assuming that they were going to indict her first and then show up at her front door with surprise, right. you know, we didn't forget about you. Right. Um, but when you hear that she's booking one way plane tickets to Vietnam, uh, that, uh, that certainly does speed things up quite a bit. I mean, I'm assuming that they plan to, you know, put their feet up, have a drink, take a couple weeks off, and then maybe we'll take it to the grand jury. I, I, I think it was not that far off, but you know, you don't, after a trial like that, let me tell you, you think you've been exhausted in your life. That is pure exhaustion. And one of the things that you don't think about is think about being on your feet all day in heels every single day, the way Georgia was. That like I when I would try cases for multiple days in a row, I would go home and put them in an ice bucket, wow. and then be like back in the next day in my heels. And then I was like, why am I wearing heels? So I've just stopped that. Well, but Georgia yeah. does. Her shoes are gorgeous. Well, by the way, not only do you have to be on your heels, you got to deal with in the last trial, Wendy and Charlie Adelson. You have to deal with their nonsense. I have to imagine that that and and that's a, talk about evolution from me watching all the trials it seems like georgia has had it with wendy at this point or maybe it's just her starting to kind of turn you know turn the uh push the buttons a little bit more as like we, we 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 know what's going on with you wendy i mean have you noticed a difference in her or does it seem the same for all the trials her demeanor with wendy at least um that's an interesting question because usually i'm not watching georgia um it, it when wendy's on the stand i'm, I'm paying attention to the witness um, I, Georgia has always been someone who is, uh, she'd be a very good card player. Um, you know, she's very good at hiding her true thoughts and, you know, just, just the facts, ma'am kind of thing. Um, even, even in cases I've had with her, uh, on the defense team, she has not, you know, there, there's been very little movement as far as, uh, you know, even when something just truly horrific has happened, no reaction, it's it's studied. And even I can't do that. And I've been practicing, I mean, not as long as she has, but I mean, I'm, I'm 15 years in, she's probably what, 20, 22 years in practicing. Um, I can't, I, I've been told to fix my face in the past by judges. <laughs> so, uh, and, and she does not have that problem, I've noticed. Well, so. I'll uh, that's that's what I noticed in the last trial is she started like mm -hmm. full body like going she was like come on like she was very and the first couple of trials this mm -hmm. last trial she was very I mean not uh, to your point she she, she was she was sniping with them a little bit but as far as body language and facial expressions I don't I didn't see a change you're gonna have to watch I made a video I'm gonna I'll show I'll send it to you. yeah I compared the first trial with the latest trial I'll send it to you she, to to me at least she. I like. I mean, how could you not have it with Wendy? Because to me, she just thinks she's smarter than everyone else. I, you know, I, I don't. How? Let me ask you, you mean, this. You mean Wendy? <laughs> yes. Oh, I, and by the way, did you see at the end of her initial direct before they they have a break, and she almost breaks down, Wendy. She's like drinking her water. She's blinking. Like I never saw her have a reaction in any of the other trials and in this trial. I'll say that. The sidebar. 
Yes, it was. They go to the sidewalk. Yeah. The camera stays on it, her. Was it when they were going to bring Jeff Lacasse back in. It, it might have been. And when it, she denied it, she was it, like, shit, I made a mistake. She was oh. like malfunctioning. I call her Wendy Bot because she's like a robot because she's just like. But she was like malfunctioning. She was her eyes are flying. Her she's like her she's breathing heavy. It was it was a sight to be seen. I think she knows Georgia has her down. I I hope she I hope she has Pepto a lifetime supply of Pepto because her stomach's got to be bothering. I mean, so let me ask you about uh, Wendy. Do you think right now they're surveilling her? They're bugging her? Like, do you think that's going on? Or or if they are, how long has it been going on? Or what do you think? I have been told that it's going on. Um, by uh, uh, sources that um, have set it into other microphones. So I'm not afraid to repeat okay. it here. Okay. Um, so, I, I mean, I, I have no personal knowledge. It's not something I would try to protect if I knew about it. Um, uh, but I, I've, I have heard from other attorneys that they are being surveilled and other attorneys that have appeared on podcasts. So I'm, I'm comfortable saying that in, into a microphone. And I feel like if they weren't before her mom tried to get the hell out, they sure <laughs> were after that. I mean, why wouldn't they think that she's going to do it next? I mean, the whole family's together. I mean, let me ask you this. How how are they going to – how would the Tato uh, and uh, Sigfredo, how would they know when Dan was going to be where he was? Like, how do they know he was there that weekend, the exact times? I mean, and they showed in the last trial, Wendy at her parents' house, pinging at her parents' house, during the big birthday party, which which is a big thing in this new trial, that the birthday gift was this murder, texting uh, Dan, "Hey, are you going to be around during the weekend he's murdered?" Don't you? Isn't that like a massive problem for Wendy against her? Well, I, I also assume that we there's stuff that was gotten out of Wendy's phone that we've never heard about too, because remember she gave up that phone. Um, but yeah, I, I think that that is an issue. Um, now, you did hear um, uh, Luis Rivera say that he, they followed Dan um, and they followed him to Premier Fitness, which had some decent cameras. And you see the the Prius following him around, uh, but it, that he was working out at Premier and then he went home and that this was kind of a routine for him, it, maybe, maybe just in the summer. Uh, because his kids were in the preschool, he would drop the kids off, then he'd go work out, and then he'd go home. Uh, since law school was not in session, or he didn't have classes he was teaching at that time. So, um, yeah, I, it, I I think it's problematic, but she will have an answer for it. Well, she has the way answer. that, oh, I always delete my you know calendar appointments. And my messages. Uh, I use it like a to-do list. Yeah. Well, I, I think you're right. And that's something. <laughs> I always just delete everything when I'm planning my murders. Um, one of the or things I was just on Trescott because it was a cut through. No, it's oh, not. Yes, let's get into that's, that. That's the one that drives me crazy. That's the one. She lies in all three trials about that because she says, I did a K turn. I just, I saw that she could not have yeah. seen the crime scene tape without going on Trescott. That is such a lie. And by the way, it's also a lie that it would have been. Like, why would she drive all the way that way when there's a liquor store right by the restaurant she was going to? I mean, it just doesn't make sense. And I can tell you that the reason, okay, so I'm married, I'm married with a small child and a bunch of pets, like way too many pets. Um, and the reason people like me want to live on Trescott Drive is because it's not a cut through. And the last, I, the only reason I've been on Trescott Drive was to look at real estate. And at the time that I went there to look at real estate, I believe that there were speed bumps there. And I'm now on my way back to my that's office. I'm going to drive. Correct. Yeah, it's not a cut through. There's speed bumps. This is not the way that you drive your minivan. So in the in the most recent trial, she was saying, "Well, it was like my way of healing from my divorce." No, uh, you hated the guy. Yes, you hated the guy. And like, if anybody's ever had an ex that they really had a falling out with, um, do you drive past their house? Hell no. No, you avoid them like the plague, just like my neighbors. Yes, no, you do. Right, exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah. So the, uh, then that brings up brings me to another question. I've seen this regarding the immunity she has. I've seen this on other channels and other just in other places that that the immunity can be uh, gotten rid of or doesn't apply if there's perjury. First of all, I assume it's really hard to prove perjury. And second of all, is that true? Like, is there any way of getting around her immunity? Uh, so her immunity is only for her testimony, for the things that she testified to. 
um, use and derivative use immunity. Use means um, you can't use it against her. And derivative use is anything derived from that testimony you cannot use against her. So if she tells you something and you're like, hmm, maybe I will do a search warrant for that cell phone based on what she told me, you can't use that against her either. Anything that's derived from her testimony. Um, but her first five hour interview is not uh, is not part of that immunity. And uh, the there the, plenty of the stuff that she said on the stand can be derived from other sources, like you know Jeff the LaCasse. testimony of yeah Jeff Lacasse, um, the uh, the contents of the divorce file um, are I mean they're filed. It's it's a public record under seal. You can you can just admit that. Um, so I, I, there, there is a method to, um, uh, and another lawyer said that he had heard that she was going to consult with an expert on this issue. I have no personal knowledge. I'm repeating what I've heard to be clear. Um, but there is a federal case called Castigar. It's with a K. Um, and it is a hearing that you would hold to prove that your evidence as a prosecutor is not derived from the stuff that she had immunity on um, or if any of her testimony that was immunized. So uh, uh, I have never done one, but my old office used to have a public corruption unit in Broward. We were really specialized down there because there were so many lawyers. And uh, I did, uh, I remember talking to the head of the unit and he was like, it is like being shot in each one of your toes individually uh, during this hearing. It is an annoying, awful, lengthy hearing, but it can be done. Mm. And in this case, I, you know, the fact that it can be done and the fact that you, know, you can prove where they got all this other information, i.e. not from Wendy on the stand. I feel like they have to have something on WhatsApp because the questions in each trial, and I know they can't use what she says about it, but even Chris De DeCoste in one of the trials is like, you know you swore swore under oath, right? And then he goes into WhatsApp, and each trial yeah, they bring up WhatsApp. Oh yeah, that was great. That was great. good job, Chris. When he when he gets the, her, he asks, "Who else would have paid these bills?" And she turns back and looks at the judge and is like, "Help judge, me, judge, leave me." And George is like, "I don't care." Right? She's like, yeah, like normally, if you're the prosecution's witness, you like look at the prosecutor for help, like to object. And George is like, "No, nah, I'm good." <laughs> That was a great moment. I loved it. Uh, but it just, it's an enormous amount of speculation. Like, she's like, this should be a speculation objection. And Judge is like, go ahead, ma'am. And Chris is like, yeah, no, is like I'm not objecting to anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She probably, she has to enjoy that. She's just sitting there watching that. Um, she, no, it, he probably no went. Her... Question. What's that? There's been no objection. Answer the question. Right. It was great. But yeah. So I think. She, to me, I don't know if you think this, but they probably have something from her phone that she didn't realize they could get that they hasn't come out yet. Do you do you think that's a possibility? So um, I have tried to subpoena WhatsApp, and I remember it being very instrumental in one of my sex crimes cases back in about 2013. So in a, in a similar period of time, um, and and this family had uh, family overseas. I think they they had uh, Jamaican family members. Um, and, and so that's why they were using WhatsApp, um, because uh, it's commonly used to communicate between, um, uh, it, to communicate internationally. So um, I could not get the messages and I do remember that, but it, it is entirely possible that they managed to do some kind of subscriber information. So while you could not get the contents of the messages, you could know that she had an account, when it was created, those kinds of things. And her, co I, I did a video on this and I, I re, because the FBI, someone FOIA'd, like, they had like this document that showed what you can get. One of them is your, their contacts. So, like, you know, if Katie is a contact or, or who, you know, plus her whole, what about that would be a perjury. But the thing is, it's so long ago that, I mean, the, the whole, like, you know, do you know how, the reason perjury is so difficult to jump topics is because, you can just be mistaken right. and it not be perjury. Like if I say, hey, last Thursday I went to Disney and it turned out it was Monday. Uh, eh, you know, is that really something, is that a hill you're going to die on? 
Well, I feel like that's why she answers the questions the way she does. And that's why she angers also all so much because she answers oh. it in a way so that you can't. She's like, well, like she never gives a yes or no answer. It's if always. You know, you know. Yeah, it's always. And I feel like that's why, because she like you can't pin her down. Like that's what's so frustrating about her. But uh, I think my child was attending creative preschool. No, you know where he was at school. I don't. That's just a, I, I, I don't know if she denied that. But I mean, like, that's the kind of I think I was driving a minivan at the time. No, you know what car you were driving. I don't know what Charlie's car. I didn't know Charlie had a Ferrari. It was some kind of sports car. I didn't know. Like, yes, you did. Jeff is like, she told me several times. You know, we talked about the car. Like, she's. Yeah. Uh, I think my kids spent the night at Danny's house the night before. You, that is a fact. You know that. Uh, gibbers. I don't know. Judge, I don't. I, that was one of my favorite moments. Is the first. Judge. How do you spell it? Uh, I think it was J I. And then George is like, uh, it was in your phone, in madam. Your yeah. It was in your contacts. That was a great moment um man i just so let me ask you this so let's say they get they we, we got they got charlie he's gonna do his appeal or whatever um let's say they get donna they, so then they have to do the grand jury like you said unless she tries to flee the country if they're gonna go after wendy is that that's got to be massive if they get both of them going forward in a trial for wendy right to, to say that both of them have been convicted as co conspirators or is that not as big a deal as i think it is so the, the senior partner in my firm is, is uh, and he appears on STS all the time, Tim Jansen. Yeah. Um, he like, you know, one of the things that he has said about Wendy really resonated with me because I'd never heard it before because Wendy's like a mushroom. She, she grows well in the shade. They're all shading her. That's, that's kind of the, the theory of defense that would be going on there. I just think it's highly unlikely. I think so too. I mean, she's not an idiot. No. And I also think it's a, you're an attorney. Like it's a massive mm -hmm. deal. If, if, if someone filed a, a motion uh, like Dan did for contempt and sanctions, and then all of a sudden that they don't, that hearing doesn't happen because Dan is murdered. Like, it's not a big deal for a lawyer to have another lawyer file sanction and contempts against like, that's massive. Right? I feel like she didn't want, that was one of the reasons she, and, and especially for Donna, for her hearing, they did not want that hearing to happen. Yeah, I mean, uh, and so the uh, the judge that they had, I don't know if she would have held somebody in contempt for something like this. But I mean, I, I do know that the the I was actually assigned to the judge they had in their divorce case for uh, part of my career up here. And I, I can tell you that she's very good at humans. She's very good at reading people. She's very good at like something ain't right here. So um, I, I can't tell you that she would actually hold a lawyer in contempt, but I can tell you that like she's got a very good, um, like she can smell a rat. Right. Well, I, to me, like, I think it's more of the fact that, and you know, maybe they wouldn't have granted the motion, but Wendy's such a narcissist that to be in open court and they're bringing in witnesses to talk about because she he was alleging she falsified the 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 um the money that she was supposed to pay or how much she was making and, and like so to me that was a big deal to her and she didn't want to deal with that but she was lying about things that were like demonstrably provable like i mean it's it's not like you don't have a w2 from florida state university and and that they're i mean they're part of the state university system of course they're going to have records it's not like you're getting paid under the table i mean it's right like she's lying about stupid stuff right well yeah <laughs> she's the worst <laughs> uh, well no it's, a, it's almost compulsive it seems that like you know you're lying about stuff that you don't even need to lie about that's that's what's i mean i don't know if you've ever known people like that who are like lying about what they did last saturday and you're like why are they lying there's nothing wrong with what you actually did but i know you're not telling the truth right like even the ferrari why lie about that just say yes you had right. a ferrari. What what is the purpose? Why can't she? And they they she hates to admit that she they have money or that her parents are wealthy. Like she doesn't want it. She wants to appear. I think to the jury that she's just I'm just one of you guys. I, I didn't make that much money. I, to me, I, I don't know. But uh, Little Springs is a wealthy community in in Broward County. I grew up in Lauderdale by the sea, which is why I have to get my skin 
checked by a dermatologist so often because it you know, I, I, I went, you know, I was the beach, but they're, they're out West. And this is one of these, like, it's actually just South of Parkland, very wealthy, uh, very good schools, pu very good public schools, the only good public schools in Broward, I believe. Um, and uh, currently the, I, I think that the, the median price for like, you know, your standard, like three, two in Coral Springs is about four or $500,000. So that's, to, to just kind of lay the, the the groundwork and, you know, on a lot where the house is basically up to the lot line. So it's, you know, not, it, it, it's expensive to live down there too. So she might, might've thought she was like middle-class because the houses looked kind of middle-class, but when you look at the money, it's not. Yeah. I mean, they were making over millions, 2 million a year or something like that. They, they're, they were making a lot of money. I mean, what, by the way, we haven't even talked about Harvey um surely if there's stuff on the on the there's got to be stuff about him on that ipad or on those uh, on those electronics like what are they wait uh, are they also waiting for him for donna you think i mean he like what they don't have enough for him at this point you think well it's, i i think to myself because he they're they're similar ages of my parents if if don is bad with technology i can't imagine how bad harvey is because don is a baby boomer harvey's silent generation he was born before the end of world war ii like this is if he's using an ipad god help him well i mean according to donna he can't even take an uber home from the he you can't do exactly. this he's 80 years old he can't what, what you can't do this to how about when uh uh <laughs> yeah the, the request from don how about don um they didn't wait they didn't tell me about the warrant how could they not tell me about madam you're fleeing <laughs> the country you think they're going to tell you about the well, war call people and say hey we've got a warrant for murder one in case you want to start you know swimming to cuba and speaking of by the way i we, I, I meant to ask you this before when we were talking about dan rational what about the fact that he could possibly a witness and be a witness in the trial and the fact that it seems like maybe he was tipping them off how do you think that's that's gonna go i have no doubt and uh, so, you know, I grew up down there. I'm a lawyer. Both my parents were lawyers. My sister's a lawyer. Uh, I know Dan Rashbaum. I have no doubt that what he did was ethical um, as far as or uh, as far as what he said to Donna about that. Um, do I not like it? I don't like it. But, you know, I'm not the ethics czar. So ethically, you can tell a client, I mean, I mean, from the call, it seemed like Dan told us about flights or something to that effect. Ethically, that's okay. Uh, so at the time that he said that to her, uh, and I'm taking him at face value for uh, as to what he said about the the issue, uh, there was no warrant. She was a free citizen to go wherever she wanted to in the world, um, and there was nothing stopping her. Um, had they known that there was a grand jury convened, which there wasn't, had they known that there was a sealed warrant different story. Um, but at it, I don't like it. I'm, I'm making that totally clear. I just don't think it crosses the line. Right. Like, so he would never do anything that you like, if he had any other knowledge, he would be like, don't, we're not doing this. Don't, you know, wouldn't be saying anything, but, mm -hmm. but it's, it, you know, would I do it? No. But do I think that it crossed the line, at least from what I've heard? Now, I don't have the discovery. I don't have all the information the state has, obviously. But from what I've heard from him, uh, no, I don't. I just think it's, uh, I just don't like it. Speaking about what you've heard from him, what do you think about the fact that he's doing an interview on STS? What were your thoughts about that? He's like, do you, is he, he's trying to like do a PR push here for Donna? Like, what's the advantage of, of being a defense lawyer and giving an interview like that? I don't know. I mean, I, uh, I watched it like that, like waiting to see like, you know, am I the way that you kind of as cars like miss each other in the intersection, you look at things. Um, I, I wouldn't have done it. Um, I'm sure he's thinking that he wants his client to have the same kind of publicity that the States had since the beginning of this thing and to try to soften her image. And there's, there's, you know, I could make up a thousand different reasons that he's doing it. I don't understand why. I mean, I wouldn't have done it. Um, it it's possible Donna asked him to do it too. Mm, that's that, you know, somebody needs to get out in front of this. Right. 
Very interesting. Um, let me ask you, uh, by the way. If my client asked me to do it, though. What'd you say? I still don't think I would have done it if my You'd client like, asked No way. I'm not going out there. I'm not going out, like. Well, it's it's just like, you know, there's just, there's there's rules about your loyalty to Charlie. There's rules about your loyalty to Donna. There's it, there's just basically, there's so much shit that you could step in in this interview that I, I'm not comfortable with it. And then the other factor is, why are you doing the interview? Is it to influence the jury in Donna's case? And then then you're violating, you know, that that is a, a rule that you shouldn't do anything to influence the jury. We try cases in court, not in the media. Do you think that Donna's going to be able to present as like after all those emails about the nazi youth uniforms and hitler and, and be, like how could she not be hated by a jury is there any way they can spin her to be just just like an over-involved person other than like i i, I just can't believe how it's not going to be come back very quickly bad for her or do you think there's a way you can spin it to make it like it's not bad you know i in in deciding to come on here, I listened to Dan's interview again, and he's like, you know, the divorce law is the worst uh, out of everything. I agree with that. Um, and in fact, there's a divorce lawyer that my firm often works with. And I remember talking to her uh, about like some creepy people on the other side. And I was like, well, you know, they're not going to kill me. They're going to kill you. Everybody kills their divorce lawyer, not their criminal lawyer. So and she was just like, <laughs> and, 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 you know, and she deadpan turns to me and she goes, that's probably a good point. So, so uh, yeah. first, it, it is uh, like, I mean, it is the nastiest. The joke is that criminal law is oftentimes very bad people on their very best behavior. And divorce law is good people at their absolute worst. That makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. By the way, and I make sure you're following uh, Katie on Twitter. Uh, we have I, this is the pin link. This has been amazing. And I've seen all the comments in here just you're so awesome. I can't thank you enough for reaching out to me. Let me let me ask you this. You, you mentioned Easter eggs before. Are there any things that have gone on in these three trials or anything you've observed regarding Wendy or Donna, because that's where we're pending, or even Harvey, that maybe you think people aren't making, like, haven't kind of caught on, that you have caught on, that's a bigger deal than maybe folks are making? Yeah, I, I really, um, and I hope I don't do anything to make her, you know, a, 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 she looks genuinely just destroyed in this interview. Um, it, Tamara Demko, who is a friend of uh, of uh, Danny Markell's and a friend of Wendy's, like to the point in her interview, she's talking about going over to help Wendy learn how to breastfeed. Like, I mean, they are very good friends to, to be doing that. And I'd say that to you as a new mother, like, Trust me, that's that is the, the, there are lines you do not cross, and uh, apparently Tamara was welcomed in. Um, she's talking about how uh, Donna was acting at the funeral, that Ruth said she wanted to see the boys, um, and uh, I don't. Do you remember this part of it? Um, the part where, where, they, where she said that she and was Donna going ignores her and walks the boys away from Ruth, who's just buried her son. Well, and the fact that Wendy says, I'll, I'll meet you. Can, can I see the boys tomorrow? And she's like, yeah, yeah. And then the next day she's already in, she's already either driven or already to Miami and, and, and Ruth never got to see him. I mean, do you, this leads to another question. Do you think Ruth testifies on either Donna or if they go after Wendy, like she'd have to testify or, or no. Do you think if, if there's a trial for Wendy? I don't know. Um, I, t so I know that Tamara saw that, um, that interaction at the temple, um, or I actually may not have been at the burial, may have been just at the uh, funeral service. And and the other thing that you have to keep in mind is uh, Dan was a devout, I, I you know what, I don't know if you're Jewish or not. I'm not, I grew up Jew adjacent in South Florida. I have tons of Jewish friends. Um, they Dan was very um, observant yeah. as a Jew. And you know that funeral, they get them in the ground fast. Um, because they don't do any kind of preservation of the body or anything like that. So like days, days after her son is shot in the head, they're doing this to her. They're the worst. I mean, they're just the worst people. Uh, a bunch of people are saying you're awesome. And will you come back? I hope you open invite anytime if you want to come on. Um, thank you. So, I, I, are there any questions real quick before, before I go, any questions you guys have 
for Katie. I mean, this has been absolutely amazing. Um, and thank you again for reaching out to me. This is one of the first times anyone's reached out to me and say, hey, do you want to talk about it? So this has been absolutely amazing. This case is just fascinating um, because like who wakes up when they're 70 years old and has their ex-son-in-law shot in the head by a couple of thugs out of my like who does this and and then you're sitting back and you're like but he's a dentist like you don't it, it it's 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 one of those like there but for the grace of god go i situations that like who else have i interacted with that seemed normal that is capable of doing this to me over something that is trivial I mean, it's 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 mafia type stuff. This is a I call her Grandma Gotti because she and she talks about they're making offers that basically he can't refuse. They're offering a million dollars, like he was going to take a million dollars to just not see his kids anymore and they could move. I mean, this and then they literally hire hitmen. Like it's 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 unfathomable. Like you said, for this older this grandma, and then the, to me, the one thing that struck me is during when they start playing almost every call they have tapped to her. She's pushing swings. You hear swing. You hear the oh, kids God. like they're Thanks. always in earshot. Thing. She's doing this all this planning after the murder, and and the kids are right. The, the grandkids are right there. And it seems like she's spending a lot more time with those grandkids than Wendy is yes. to me. All I, the time. I I I don't know what their schedule was. I'm not trying to denigrate her as a mother. There's plenty of other reasons to do that. Um, but like it it seems like. Donna just like she almost like ceded custody to Donna. She's taking him to their after school activity. She's taking them to piano or whatever it is. And, you know, Wendy's out doing what she wants. Well, even in her police interview, I feel like it was very indicative of like, oh, well, I have this time with my friends that we go out. Like she's talking about all these things she does. It's like, when are you like, it seems like she's not with the kids that much. But I mean, that's speculation. Shelly asks, Wendy's immunity for Donna trial, will, will she still have so do they offer it each time or is that just in the beginning like does do they have to offer it each time for each trial how does that work so uh yeah so when you're subpoenaed by the state that's the important part and this is why the defense kind of kind of got their proverbial panties in a twist over and over and over again about wendy testifying when you get a state subpoena if the state is compelling your testimony at trial you must testify and so you immunity confers with that Oh, just so just so just getting the subpoena you're, that that's included with it, right? Um, I believe that there were other um, negotiations. Uh, she's got a uh, former U.S. attorney who, or assistant John, United States John attorney, Lara. yeah, Lara. from Miami. Uh, I I've met him a couple of times, but just in passing, so I don't really know too much about him. Um, but I, you know, he is he's not a slouch. He knows what he's doing. I get the feeling there were plenty. I mean, she he flew up with her every single time she was up here. Um, I can't believe he told her to wear, somebody told her to wear the same dress twice. Uh, but <laughs> that would be my first thought is just like this looks weird. Have you heard the, th the theory about that? Why, why? Or at least what I what I've heard is that it's because like if people are googling her. I mean, at least for the first trials, she had a different one for the third one, a little different. But like if people are googling her. It would look as if she was only at one trial. That was the that was the theory that I've heard. Like, why would you? Wear was different. It did. It was much different. A lot more frizzy in the second trial. Well, to me, I was I was wondering if the second trial second trial was during COVID, and and this is just me being a petty, you know, former South Florida girl. Um, I was like, ooh, I wonder if that Brazilian blowout or the you know thing <laughs> if she wasn't getting that during the second trial because of COVID. Oh, interesting. That's <laughs> interesting. Yeah. Uh, Rachel mm -hmm. says. Uh, let me highlight this as a why is it not highlighting as a uh, child advocacy center family advocate I just want to tell her thank you for her work on child cases over the years um, that's from Rachel um, well I'll tell you that George is very calm I had I ended up started doing yoga after I had a child death case and uh, I still wasn't okay um, so I just stopped doing yoga but like you know it's like I, I feel like Georgia goes to a place in her head where she's just like you know, there's, there's like a Buddhist quality to it because I, I would not have that self-control even, even as long as I've been doing this. Uh, so I think we, we talked about this before we went, came on, but if you had a guess, when do you think, I don't think we talked about this on the interview. If you had a guess, when do you think uh, Donna's trial goes forward? I've heard that they want it to go as quickly as possible. Um, and that may be part of the thought in keeping Dan Rashbaum on that who would know this case better than him. It's, it may not be the exact same evidence, but it's similar enough 
uh, a lot of the wiretaps that relate to Charlie relate to her as well. Um, and, and, and those are pretty lengthy. So, um, I, I've heard that like June, May, something like that might be in the cards. Uh, I, I don't know that for a fact though. I've just heard that that's been kind of batted around. Uh, there is that, that other, uh, attorney who's local counsel, Alex Morris, who is, you know, a lovely person personally, uh, who I, I do know, um, but he missed the last court hearing because he was trying a different murder one. Uh, so uh, he's going to have his own trial calendar. And I believe he also practices in federal court. So um, and he, to my knowledge, he's a solo practitioner, too. So that that may play into it. Hmm. Uh, will Wendy mm -hmm. show up for Donna's trial? I don't think so. Uh, you mean uh, to testify? Or if, she, if she's subpoenaed, but she ain't going to show up in the gallery. That's for sure. She ain't going to be uh, sitting there. I mean... Uh, one thing I wanted to bring up also is I thought, and I, I haven't watched, um, obviously done a lot more trials than me, that presentation they did where they, uh, the PowerPoint, where they have the calls and the conspirators and the arrows going, to me, that was one of the best presentations I've ever seen. And if you see, watch that, those evidence, and first they start with like Tato and Katie, and then they go to the one and it's, you know, it's, it's, it's Wendy, it's Charlie, it's Donna. Uh, and it's Katie and like those hours, it, was that not an amazing presentation? To me, that was like one of the best presentations I've ever seen. And if you watch that, how could you not think they're guilty after that presentation? Yeah, th there's a good team over there at the state attorney's office. Uh, I, um, somebody who doesn't get a lot of pats on the back, although he, I think he was in the, the recent Dateline thing, is Jason Newland, who is a wonderful investigator. He's their chief investigator over there. Um, you know, it is, and and he he too, uh, similar to my old judge, is very good at humans, um, and explaining things in a way that they can be understood. Sometimes lawyers we get caught up in our own shit, and we don't, you know, we don't realize how to. Uh, the mark of genius is to be able to explain something complicated to a four year old. So, and and he possesses that. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not trying to say he's a simple person. I'm saying he's able to break complicated things down for someone who maybe is on the jury and has never done anything with the law before, never had anything with a gun before. Which I, I think we forget for folks who are who are engrossed in this case. I think we forget like there's a lot going on here to present it to a jury. Like we all know all these details about Tato and to like there's a Tato, there's a Tuto, there's the Latin Kings. There's the dentist, there's the peri like there's a lot going on. And for them to break it down to me and then get that trial, get that verdict within less than, you know, essentially less than three hours. That is just a fabulous job done by that team. And I it's again, my adopted city, I'm not telling you I'm going to live here the rest of my life, but that's Tallahassee, too. There are very smart people in Tallahassee who are just looking at it like there is no other reasonable explanation for the evidence that's here. I know he's trying to get, make up some story that explains all the evidence. And it, it was clever. It was very clever um, to try to explain all these phone calls. And it may have worked on a Miami jury. Mm. May have. Um, uh, in, in fact, I my husband and I had the, who was a former Broward prosecutor like me, we met there. Um, uh, he, it's, we were like, that might've worked in Broward. And he goes, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. He's like, I had some crazy verdicts in Broward. Like, I had a trafficking and heroin case where it was in his butt. Okay, let that one hit. And not guilty? Came back not guilty? Not guilty. And then the foreman caught me outside the courtroom as I'm, like, mentally writing my resignation letter. Because, <laughs> um, like, are you kidding me? And, and the foreman catches me and she goes, we're all going out to dinner. Do you want to come out with us? And I was like, I, I'm sure, like, I, you know, I have a problem where I have to fix my face, right? So I'm, I'm sure that was something going on. And she goes, well, we loved you. We just really hated the cops. And I was just like, go have dinner with your five crazy friends. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's a six-person jury on anything that's not capital. So, uh, but, like, you know, it's it, it may have worked down there. It really may have. And I, I think that that's some of the bias that they brought with them up here. I mean, I was shocked at some of the cases that I want up here as a prosecutor. Hmm. And how quickly, too. Interesting. 
Uh, so far, I'm like, I'm trying this case because they don't want my offer. I offered them something crazy. Great. Um, and, you know, guess what? We're here and I'm going to put my money where my mouth is. And, you know, it, it could go either way. And then they come back guilty as charged within like, you know, 30 minutes. And I'm like, what just happened? I'm so you glad. Know, I'm, you, that. I'm so glad you just said about an offer because that leads me to a question that I would have been so angry if I didn't ask you. Do you think any of the Adelsons flip on any of the, like Wendy, Charlie, Donna, Harvey, do you think there's any point where any of them, first of all, they probably won't get offered anything, right? But do you think they will go and say, like, I, I, I just think Charlie prison has got to be real tough for him. He really didn't think he was going, the life he has led, and he kind of has some resentment very clearly for Wendy. Do you think there's any in any where any world where any of them flip on each other, or do you think they're just all going down with the ship? So it's like like I said, maternity leave. It's not that I've been neglecting my job; I just haven't been at it. Um, I did listen to all of his jail calls, and I the parts I couldn't hear, I played those again because it is a and he does repeat himself so many times. He seems to have some resentment for for Wendy um, quite a bit actually, and I think that there's always that rivalry between siblings. We could talk about that for hours, I'm sure. Uh, but at the end of the day, would he? I don't know. I don't know him. Um, I just, you know, I, I once you've been in prison for a little bit, you know, remember he was in the county jail and he was in uh, with commissary and guys that he liked in the jail. He says he had friends in the jail. He had friends that were good enough friends to where he gave his food away to them once he left and wanted to make sure it went to them. And, uh, I, I think that once you've been in prison a little bit longer, the Florida state prison system, not club fed, uh, that things might look a little bit different. Um, I, I have to think that a mother would not flip on her children. So that's that's my thought process, but right. well, I, I also mean, think. Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I, I just no, want to get this. No. Um, so when when somebody's offered a deal, like to flip on somebody, usually it's the defendant approaching the state, not the state coming to the defendant saying, "Hey, can I offer you this for a deal?" Because that looks terrible, and you don't want to say like, "Oh, he just did this. He made up this story for this kind of a deal." So you let them come to you. And then prior to offering or prior to giving them anything, you take a proffer from them, which is where they go under oath and tell you everything. And uh, after that, there's uh, a, a process that you go through with them testifying at the trial where they're not sentenced until afterward. So you still have that scythe hanging over their neck. That's the way I always used to do it. You know, if they get up on the stand, they say, I don't know what you're talking about. Then, you know, you don't have a plea that's hanging out there. You you do an open plea and you, you sentence them after they testify. Well, I mean, speaking of uh, proffers and tough times in prison, just look at Katie Magbanawa. All of a sudden, this trial, she decides, guys, bring me in. I have some more stuff to say. And what about the fact, <laughs> what did you think when all of a sudden it comes out in trial that she the money was washed and she thinks that Donna washed the money? What, what did you think about when that came out? Which, by the way, also, just incidentally. Literal money laundering. Literal. That's how dumb they are. Literal money money laundering. But I mean, those proffers were were frustrating as hell. I don't know if you watched them, man. You can they, hear Jason Newland just being like, and you can tell he's like, no, 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 <laughs> you know. And Pat Sanford too, right? I mean, they were both yeah. like, "What are you doing, woman? You told us to." to and like, yeah. So speaking, just I mean, just thinking about Charlie, like she's been in there for a little bit, and she's like, maybe I can help out here, and maybe they'll do something for me. And that wouldn't put it wouldn't be surprising to me with Charlie to maybe think that. But he hasn't been in there for that long. She's been in there for a little bit longer, obviously. Um, yeah. Um, I also thought that the codependence between Donna and Charlie, there was a lot of that going on. And then Harvey's I, I don't know if he's just listening in and Donna's talking for both of them or if this is just Donna on the phone the whole time. I know that Harvey's heard a couple times, but it's yeah. it's a fascinating family dynamic. That I mean, Shirts. like there there are shrinks that could spend their whole lives on the Adelsons, I'm sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Cynthia says, Katie Esquire, best guest ever. Helen agrees. Nice. You've been amazing. This has been um, absolutely amazing. Oh, one last question. Charlotte, my good friend Charlotte asked, how did you find me? How did you find, was it Twitter or YouTube? How did you, were you aware of this channel? 
Oh, it's it. I'll blame it on my maternity leave. Um, I uh, I found somebody who swore uh, quite a bit and uh, felt like home. People don't do that. <laughs> oh, that's that's like that makes makes my heart more. I, that makes me feel so good. That's uh, that's why that's why you came on the show. I have never sworn in court though, uh, unless there were quotations around it. Uh, that like I don't know how I managed to do it, but. Well, and if you did, you would have made uh, Charlie just laugh so hard because he just couldn't believe when when that you know when they say fuck or et cetera. He thought it was just so funny. That smug look on his face was off when he got that guilty verdict. That piece of garbage. But uh, I digress. Katie, yeah. go ahead. Oh no, I I I, I love that they put up the phone call, the first phone call afterward, because um, I've always like even as a pro like, I don't have access to this stuff anymore, but even as a prosecutor, I'd convict somebody and then like skip back to my office, go listen to their jail calls. Oh yeah, that's cool. And usually it'd be like a crime against children and they'd be talking terrible stuff about me. Like they did about Georgia and like lying son of a bitch, uh, you know, everything wrong. I, I was going to turn one of them into my ringtone and I decided against it. <laughs> oh man, you are so awesome. This has been so amazing um what is she, i think we kind of brought this up what does katie think about charlie saying everyone in tallahassee is a third they're smarter than you think folks they're they're not they're the dumb ones are in jail the dumb ones are calling and and fleeing the country they're they're the dumb ones they they, they think everyone else is dumb but you know that's why they're guilty and they and they had to do this in the first place is just mind-boggling they couldn't just agree to just get divorced just get a divorce you couldn't but I could. It, everyone in Tallahassee doesn't have a grade three education. We have the highest educational level in the state of Florida in this in this city, and it's because there's a ton of state government workers. There's a ton of people that are administrative state government workers here. Masters in public health, masters in uh, uh, finance, masters in, uh, in anything you could imagine. And then we've got major universities up here. So we've got the professors. We've got. Um, you know, we've got PhDs in chemistry running around and uh, students that are grad students at these major universities. FAMU has one of the best pharmacy schools in the country. Um, like people here are not stupid. They might have a twang, but do not underestimate them. Yeah, just like the Adelson said, big mistake. Um, yeah, guys, uh, make sure you're following Katie on Twitter. She tweets about the housewives like I do sometimes. Um, because I, when I'm making these videos about the Adelsons, my wife Shannon, she's watching those shows, and I'm tweeting about how Garcelle is the only one who's worth anything, uh, at least on the show that we that we watch. Uh, that's the one, babe. What's that one? With Garcelle. Beverly Hills. Do you watch that one? I, I like Garcelle. The rest no, of the but I need to start. That's like a great way to turn your head off. I started watching The Bachelor when I did the child homicides, and I was just like, I just need something with zero redeeming intellectual value. Oh, was it The Bachelor? Am I wrong this whole time? Was it not Housewives that you did? Oh, you no, watched? I watched The Bachelor, but I, I do think I need to start watching Housewives, too. Oh, it's the I'm so sorry. I messed that up. <laughs> it's The Bachelor, guys. She tweets about The Bachelor. $20 super chat from Helen Steiner. Thank you so much. Uh, Katie, seriously, open invitation. This has been absolutely amazing i can't thank you enough for reaching out to me and coming on please follow her uh on twitter guys um and then tomorrow monday guys don is in court we got a hearing i gotta find out what time that is but monday is the next hearing for uh for old grandma Gotti. you want so, me to look it up for you sure if you want i mean if it doesn't take a while oh no uh, take about five minutes or five yeah, not not five actual minutes helen thank you so much while she looks this up thank you so much helen um yeah, I've got a clerk login. My login's my face now because the phones are all smarter. By the way, you guys are walking around with these little computers in your pocket. Don't try to commit crimes. Yeah, exactly. Adelson. Rabbit says, what does Katie hear from other Tallahassee citizens? Everybody knows everybody else's business. What is the scuttlebutt? What do you mean about this case, Rabbit? I don't know if she's... Well, I mean, uh, so like one of my neighbors used to be the was called in for jury duty on this case, and she used to work in the law library at wow. uh, at FSU, and she was like, "Well, I mean, he did go to my retirement party. I didn't know him that well." And, you know, they're going like this to her name. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, see ya. Yeah. So it's yeah. Everybody does know everybody. Everybody knows this case, but it's also because someone was shot in the head in broad daylight in the nicest neighborhood. You can buy a house in on a street with speed bumps so that kids can play safely and nobody's dog gets run over. 
and who apparently i mean the man's only crime was he he loved his sons very much and they and they couldn't handle it. i mean that, like not that that's a crime the only like that's that was their issue with this man just ridiculous and as a like a new mother like i i watch my husband with our kid and i'm like how could you want to take that away from your kids especially if he's involved it's just pure and he's like, and they love him and he loves it's not like one of these situations where there is abusive to the whole family and georgia harped on that fairly well too um Okay, so 2-12-24, it's at 2.30 p.m. in Judge Everett's courtroom, and I'm assuming it's going to be live streamed because who wouldn't? Yeah, so we'll we'll be streaming that, folks. Um, real quick, what do you think of J- Judge Everett? I thought was awesome. Do you, uh, have you had cases with him? or? Yeah, I tried uh, I tried an attempted murder with him um, a while, so I spent the whole week with him. Um, he's wonderful. Uh, my husband's in ends of court with him. Um, ends of court is like a, a lawyer club where they all get CLEs together. Um, and as soon as the, the trial started going with Everett, uh, and of course I'm, I think I was still pregnant at the time of the trial, but so I'm like the size of a house, not moving, watching the trial and I'm texting him like Everett's a star on the internet already before, before openings even start. And he was like, I knew it because he's, he's just got a, a wonderful personality. Um, he's got a very, very good judicial temperament. Uh, things do not rattle him, but he's very able to. Uh, shut things down when they need to be shut down without losing it. He was great. We loved. It. I'm gonna one final question. I'm gonna do because legal legal mama Jan has his fight. If that's okay, why does uh, does Katie think the delay with charging when he has to do with the boys still being my mi- minors and no father? W- would that be something that they would factor in? No, uh, I I no. Uh, I, in, in that scenario, uh, the Markells could potentially even get custody of the kids, um, especially given Harvey's advanced age and the fact that he can't call an Uber for himself, as he mentioned. Right. It was so he couldn't get home. Right. Um, and the fact that any other, you know, well, or, or maybe Rob Adelson, the oldest brother. Mm, right. Um, I, I don't know what other family they have, but I, you don't, you might delay an arrest because somebody's got their kids with them in the car and it's like, you know, a trafficking case or something like that. You don't delay an arrest in a homicide. Interesting. That makes a lot of sense. That's my opinion. Now, are they going to try to not do it in front of the kids? Hell yes. Like no cop wants to do that. Um, and in fact, uh, if you watch some of the body cam that like law and crime puts up, you'll often see them. If, if somebody's driving with their kids in the car, that they will walk the person they're going to put in custody away from the car. So the kids can't see them go into cuffs and then immediately put them in the back at the back seat of the car and they'll call somebody else to pick up the kids or something like that. They're, they're very interested in protecting kids to the extent that you can while maintaining safety. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, all right, guys. Well, this has been, we're almost at an hour and a half. Katie, thank you so, so much. Uh, guys, follow her please on Twitter. Um, and then we'll see you guys on Monday, uh, for the hearing. Um, uh, awesome. All right. Bye everybody. Thank you again so much, Katie. Uh, Oh, no problem.